Hello everyone, today we're working on a 2006 Chevrolet Duramax diesel. We're installing an Amsoil BMK27 bypass filter system on the engine. And the kit comes complete, it's got uh, 12 foot of hose. It also comes with reusable hose ends. We'll show you how those go on here after a bit. It comes with the adapter for the filter. It's a two-piece adapter. And it also comes with the fittings to go to these hoses. Got two of those. One goes in the side, one goes in the end. We've got the filter head. We've got an AMZO BMK or EABP 100. That's your bypass filter. That's 98% efficient at 2 microns. And then we've got an EAO 26 AMZO full flow filter that comes with it as well. So we've got the filters, we've got the head. These here are the brackets that bolt up to the filter head. Now, what I've done is I fabricate a bracket to mount it to the pickup. This bracket will fit from 2001 through 2010. They changed the frame in 2010. Okay, so this here bolts up to the frame. It's using two existing bolts. You don't have to drill any extra holes. You use the holes that are already there. Then I also make up a couple of brackets to support the hoses. This one here bolts up uh, near the frame at the cross member at the back of the transfer case. This one here bolts up right to the frame, kind of underneath the cab, near the cab mount. And that helps support those lines so that they don't vibrate rub through on brake lines or anything like that. It gets them up and off of those. Another thing uh, Amsoil sells, they sell a, a sample valve. Now the sample valve, uh, it works fine. The only problem is they don't have anything to cap it with. And what happens is the road uh, dust and dirt and sand and salt, water can get up inside there. And that's going to mess with your sample if you're sampling the oil. So what I've done is I've put together a little better setup. The setup I have is uh, it's a valve with a cap on it keeps that whole system clean and also comes with the adapter to screw it right into the filter head. So these are all items right here that, that I manufacture or sell for, uh, for that bypass system for the 2001 through 2010 Duramaxes. So we're going to go ahead and uh, start assembling this, show you how it all goes together. We'll be back with you. Amsoil has an instruction guide for the BMK27. You can find that online. Uh, one thing that we need to do to put in this uh, oil sample valve, we've got to take out one of these plugs. If you take a look here, you've got arrows. This is the oil coming from the engine, and it goes through right here, the outside of the filter. It comes through the filter and up and out the center and back to the engine. You can see the restricted orifice here for the bypass system. It's designed to flow about a gallon a minute through that bypass filter. Okay, so we want to sample that oil coming directly from the engine. Uh, one thing Amsoil does, they put permanent Loctite on these plugs. They're hard to get out. What I ended up using, I used a uh, half inch impact and uh, buzzed it out that way. They are tight. So that's the only fault I can find with that, uh, with using that red Loctite is that they come out hard. And the other thing is, <clears throat> there's going to be a little bit of leftover what I, uh, the Loctite in these threads. And what I did is I just went through the threads and kind of peeled out that, that plasticky Loctite. And uh, we just install this uh, sample valve here. Wouldn't hurt to put a little bit of grease on all these uh, O-rings and all these fittings. The ones here on this filter here as well. Uh, just a little bit of grease for lubrication. But uh, this here is where that uh, sample valve will mount, the one that I have that I sell. So it gives you some idea where that goes and where, why you want to put it there. You want to pull that oil right from the engine to the sample. Okay, we're going to go ahead and start assembling this. And this here is the bypass or the mount bracket that goes to the frame. So here we go. Okay, coming from the center of the truck, we're going to take this bracket and go over top of the frame. And then on the outside of the frame, there's a wiring harness. And you're going to pull that out. The bracket's going to go on the frame side of that harness. And then down here is your, your uh, parking brake cable. There's two holes right here that we're going to use that are already in the frame. And 
and it brings that filter nice and high right up there on the inside of the frame. Get these nuts started here. Come on. Now we should be able to position that so that this uh, brake line right here isn't going to be affected by those. If it is, we can bend it just a little bit, get it kind of moved, but uh, those bolts are coming through right there. But you can raise it or lower it just a little bit, keep it up as high as you can. You shouldn't have an issue with those. Make sure it's mounted right where you want it. enough and far enough away we're not going to cause any issues with that brake line it's good and solid right there so now we're gonna go ahead and get the filter head on we'll start measuring our hoses up this is the filter adapter that goes on where the original full flow filter is at and what I've done is I've gotten uh, put some grease on that uh, on that o-ring there that seals up against the that aluminum block where the filter originally sealed up to and then also right in here you want to put some grease on that o-ring to lubricate it that's the one that goes right in there and then also uh, on these fittings I use a little bit of engine oil it's a little bit easier to put the engine oil on but just a little bit of lubrication on those so you don't tear those o-rings that's the biggest thing you don't want to create a leak right off the bat so any of these fittings and also this one here for the uh, sample valve as well I'll put a little bit of oil on that one okay <clears throat> and just wipe off the excess. All you need is just a light film. And then for the sample valve, I put a little bit of uh, pipe sealant with Teflon in it. And just put a light coat of that. Uh, don't get it over the end, otherwise it's going to get in your sample. If you do, wipe it off with a rag. But uh, just put a, put a coat of that on, just on the taper of it. And we can tighten that up. And I probably finish tightening that up once I get it into the head because I don't know exactly where this is going to set in the head. So we'll finish tightening that once we get it on the on the filter head down underneath the truck that we've already got on. So we'll go ahead and uh, start mounting this stuff and show you where that all goes. Okay, when you go to put this uh, filter adapter on, make sure that your your seal area is clean. Wipe it with a clean rag. Make sure there's no dirt. No dirt gets down on that stud. And what we're doing is we're putting that gold insert right inside of the black and we're screwing it onto that filter post. Okay, now the other thing is we want to put this fitting in on the side because this is the dirty oil coming from the engine. Clean oil goes up in through the center. I'm going to put that on and kind of see and get some idea where that's going to be pointed at for orientation. And my guess is probably about, probably about right there. Now this gold nut here is an inch and three quarter across. So if you got a three quarter inch drive socket set, you can use that. And when you tighten that up, you want to get it good and snug. You don't want to over tighten it, but you don't want it loose either. You don't want to create a leak. And you're going to use this elbow here to keep it from turning. And like I say, get it good and snug. Don't get crazy. Because we don't want it to be able to move. If you can grab it and move it yet, this one won't move. We're good and snug. That's good right there. Okay, and then we got this adapter goes on here. And again, that's for the center post. That's for the clean oil going back 
from the filter system. Dirty oil coming out. So we'll get these here tightened up and then we're going to start measuring up hose. And I'm going to also install, show install on the extra brackets for the line supports along the frame here. And we're going to do the line supports first then we'll start doing the, doing the uh, hose length and cutting. All right, we're right beside the transmission on the driver's side. There's a hole, a quarter inch hole in that uh, frame. And we're gonna put that smaller line support bracket right there. And we're gonna pop the, uh, pop the bolt in, put a lock nut on the back side. And you can see there's quite a few lines there, brake lines, because the brake controller's back here. We wanna keep this these oil lines from uh, making contact and vibrating on those brake lines. Okay, let's get that up there fairly straight. We got just enough clearance right there from that uh, brake line. We should be good. And solid okay that's the first one now the second one we're gonna move back a little further and we'll... okay we've got a bolt right here for this rear cross member it goes just underneath the uh, back of the transfer case a lot of threads on there yet and we're gonna put this second uh, line support bracket on right there and it's a 14 millimeter by 2.0 thread pitch it's metric and we want to keep it just far enough away we aren't rubbing on that brake line right there so we want probably about an eighth inch gap right there and uh, <clears throat> torque her down good okay that makes a nice solid bracket to support those lines and keep up and away from that brake controller and all those brake lines back there. So we got about an eighth inch between this and that bracket. So now we'll take off these clamps here and uh, we'll start measuring our hose and get our hoses cut. Okay, we're going to measure for cutting the hoses. We're going to put these fittings on. When you put them on, put them on all the way. And also these back parts, make sure that they're screwed on all the way. Okay, because we're going to measure right up to where that hose goes, which is about right there where my thumb is at. I've got one of these assembled. And we're gonna take that and bring it on through here by the brake controller, analog brake controller. We're gonna do the outside one, which is the dirty oil from the engine going over to the filter system. We're gonna do that first. And if we have to, we might have to put the clamps on along with the bolts so that this all stays right in place. Otherwise, it's going to start moving on us. We're not going to know exactly where we're at. Okay, there's one. And now we're coming back to the second one. I'm going to go ahead and put a clamp on that hose to hold it in place. To keep it right where I want it. There we go. Go ahead and throw the nut on so it don't come out. Okay, now I brought a marker along, just a Sharpie marker. And I've got that pretty well where I want it. And we're going to bring it right up to the edge right here, and that's where we're going to mark it. If you want to leave just a little bit extra, you can. It's up to you, but uh, there should be enough flex and everything in that line. We get enough looseness everywhere. And we're going to mark it with that Sharpie. And this hose does not have any wire braids in it. So you can use a hose slicer to cut it. I can show you that here in a minute. That gives me uh, the markings on this one. So we'll take that back out, we'll cut it and assemble it on the vise, then we'll measure the same way on the other one. Okay, okay this is how we uh, fabricate the hose ends, put them on. 
I've got a hose slicer here. It's a blue point. And again, this hose has no wire in it. There's no wire braids in it. It's a nylon on the outside, synthetic rubber on the inside. And this makes a nice straight cut on that hose. Okay, and then the, uh, the end here, it's reverse threads. So you're going to start that and turn it reverse. And I usually just take the, you can use your hand, but uh, you can use a crescent wrench as well. And you take it in until it just bottoms out about right there. And then we give it a squirt of oil to lubricate it. Put it on the threads and the hose. And then this is inserted, and this is standard right-hand threads on this. So we get that started, and we clamp it in the vise. Tighten it down until it goes all the way. Right there. That's it. Okay, in order to get this uh, sample valve in there and in the right spot being tight, we're going to install this first. Because everything's kind of tight up here, you don't have room to swing a wrench. So we're going to install this, tighten it up. Okay, and then we're going to take a marker, and we're going to mark the bottom. So we know right where we need to have that sample valve pointing. Okay, and then we'll take it back out, and we're going to put it in the vise. And then we'll tighten it so that this is pointing towards that mark. And then we can come back and put it in with the wrench and then we don't have to fight the bottom of the cab. So just a little installation tip on that. When you go to tighten up these hose fittings, they're going to want to spin on you. So get a second wrench, they're both one inch, okay? Two one inch wrenches. And you can hold this where you want it while you tighten the, the nut on that fitting. That will keep your holes from twisting on you. So just another installation tip on that. Get them good and snug. You don't want them coming loose. When you go to tighten up this, this fitting on this one, this is going to be in the way, and this is locked tighted in, so it's going to be in there really tight. What I did is I just took this other hose fitting off out of the way. Make sure you don't damage this taper right here, because that's what that hose seals on is that, that uh, taper right there. It's about a 37 degree taper, so you don't want to damage it on either side. What I do is come in right here, hold the hose. And like I say, be careful you don't damage that fitting. You should be able to sneak it right on by and get that tight. All right. Yeah, you can get right by there. And then go ahead and put the second one on. This one here you can get around pretty decent. It's that other one there, it's, gonna be, it's the tough one. So just another installation tip. Okay, we pretty well got this all installed. And again, I'm going to go over this uh, this whole system. This outside here, this is the adapter for where your original filter was at. You can see the drive shaft right here. And uh, the dirty oil comes out the side right here on that elbow. Follows along that hose. And uh, <clears throat> I can kind of show you what I've got there for bracket. There's that first bracket I made. Gets it up and off those brake lines so you aren't vibrating on those. And uh, kind of takes it on back. I don't know if I can get a decent shot back here to kind of show you. I'm going to try to show you how those hoses all look. Kind of tough to see in there, but it gives you some idea. Get some hoses up just under the cab so they aren't rubbing on anything. Got them mounted real nice in there. Keep them from vibrating on all the different uh, steel tubes and everything's back there. Okay, now that, that line, we're going to come over here and that's the outside line right here. That outside line is feeding that dirty oil into the filter. This is your full flow filter, and this is where it comes in on that outside. And it also feeds that bypass filter right here. And then we go through the filter media from the outside, and it flows through to the inside. And when it does, it flows up the center of each one of those. So all the oil from both filters gets pushed back through the other line, and that feeds over and up. <clears throat> Take you under here. Feeds you right back up to the center post where the original filter is on. And then that feeds all your engine bearings and everything that needs to be lubricated in the engine. So that kind of gives you some idea how that works. And uh, I'm going to come back here and show you the sample valve again. We've got that on there. 
And that sample valve again is on that dirty oil coming from the engine. And I've got a, it's a 9 16 wrench, takes off that cap. And this makes it easy for you to take a sample and that cap keeps it clean. And again, I offer that, that's the, uh, the adapter, the cap, and the valve. I offer that uh, along with the brackets that I make now. This here is a pretty nice solid setup. It's not going anywhere. It's bolted, you know, using two existing holes in that frame. And uh, it's kind of a J-shaped bracket. And I'll show you the outside of it here a little bit. And it bolts up nicely there and gets you clearance from, uh, from that brake line that's right along the top of the frame. And also we've got a uh, brake cable down here and a uh, wiring harness. So that kind of gives you some idea of the setup on that. Thank you for watching my video. If any of you would like to purchase any of the brackets I fabricated for this uh, install, uh, you can contact me by email, by phone, uh, Facebook, or my website. And also, if you don't already have a Hamsel Wholesale account, I'd be happy to set one up for you. A wholesale account will save you about $100 on the price uh, or the retail price of the bypass system for these trucks. So feel free to contact me. And I want to thank you again and have a great day. Thank you for watching my video. Be sure to check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel at youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Donswell. I'd like to introduce you to Amsoil Synthetic Lubricants. We have the most complete line of synthetic lubricants on the market that offer you greatly reduced wear, extended drain intervals, longer equipment life. You can check that out at my website, donswell.com. I also have a website for looking up fluid capacities. It's fluidcapacity.com. You can go there and print off the capacity of your engine oil, cooling system, transmission, transfer case differentials. Be sure to like us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Don Synthetic Lubes. Thank you and have a great day.